All right, Matthew, our tune in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today book author Joshua Cooper uh, Ramo. Author, The Age of uh, the Unthinkable, Why the New World Disorder Constantly Surprises Us and What We Can Do About It. Joshua, welcome to Traders Nation. How are you today? I'm really well. Pleasure to be with you. Good, good. Thanks for being here today. Hey, what's the biggest global uh, challenges that the United States is uh, facing today? You know, in trying to understand what's going on in the world, I... I so there, there's a one big challenge, which is our world is getting more and more disruptive every single day. Yeah. I went out, I spent time with guys in Hezbollah, with people who are in the hedge fund trading business, with guys starting technology companies. Overwhelmingly, these are people who want to disrupt the global order. In some cases, disrupt it for evil. In other cases, for good. Sure. But we're just not prepared today for the scale of challenge we face. I, I'm telling you, I mean, it's, you can almost sense it on the street when the guy on the street can sense that there's problems going on and it seems to be getting worse and not better. It's like we get, we've got to watch over here in the Middle East. We've got the Russians, you know, That's the, right. the, the, the parade. Uh, yeah. And now we know it's the Chinese. Yeah, now we know the Chinese can take out, uh, you know, a carrier or two. Um, is this a lot of, are we, in, we're in the age of instant information. And um, I don't. Is that good or bad? Obviously, we need to know, but still, nonetheless, it makes everybody feel unsettled. Yeah, you know, I, I also don't think it's just about information. I mean, I, I think it is about the uh, that world is changing. Yeah. The information is a symptom of it. It's, it's part of the reason that it happens is because right. we are so interconnected. Right. It's very easy, for instance, for the Iranians to right. watch the way we treat North Korea and learn a lesson. It's very easy for people to watch the subprime mortgage market tank in the U.S. and get nervous about oil prices in the Middle East. So. Yeah. The information itself is as much a part of the problem. And that's the nature of our age. You know, the stuff we rely on to be modern, financial markets, bioengineering, jet airplanes, they're also loaded with danger, and that's why we've got to adjust. Right, all right. Now, as you know, the world's decentralized and, and resulting in, in profound, like you mentioned, instability. So how is it possible that we can reliably predict uh, any re de re real detail of the future? Well, you know, one of the things I did is I spent time with uh, one of the most successful generals ever and the head of Israeli military intelligence. And yeah. He said something to me, which I'll never forget, which is you've got to always look at the whole system and not just focus at the problem that seems like it's the most urgent. When you just focus on the subprime crisis, for instance, you ignore everything else. When you think, I'm just going to remove Saddam and don't pay attention to all the forces around him, if you just think, I'm going to attack Afghanistan and don't worry about Pakistan, that's when you start to get into trouble. And so that's the first thing is we've got to get in the habit of looking at things as complete systems, because until we do that, we're going to keep getting surprised. Right. Israelis are pros at this, because let's face it, they're surrounded by enemies all the way around, and if anybody's in the front line of, of uncertainty, it's got to be the Israelis. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, I agree 100%. Israel is an example of kind of the dynamics of the world at large, which right. is surrounded by dangerous and constantly surprising landscapes. Right. All right. So, in, in your opinion, what's the most unthinkable hotspot around the world today, or hot spots, if you will? Well, I think the major unthinkable hotspot in the world today is the global debt market. It's, it's uh, about to get subjected to something it's never seen before, which is $2 trillion of U.S. finance debt being pumped into the markets in a very short period of time. You know, the potential instability as a result of that is huge. We've just never seen it before. I don't think any of us can predict how it's likely to react. Yeah, what are the, what are the possibilities that we may see? If, if we could guesstimate what it could be or what the results could be. I mean, one, of, one of the challenges, you know, part of the reason the book is called The Age of the Unthinkable is yeah. that I really wanted to use chaos theory to look at the way the world works. And once you start doing that, you learn very quickly that it's hard to predict what the impacts are going to be. The range of impacts, though, are much broader than we may think. And the chances of just sort of taking our financing, and this isn't like taking out a simple bank loan. This is radically re-architecting the global institutions of lending. And yeah. the implications are huge. You know, we know for sure that when the government borrows this, much money. It has the effect of crowding out other investors, so it means it's going to be more expensive for corporations to borrow. It means if you're borrowing from the United States at 6% interest, you're going to want to borrow from, you know, if you're going to lend money to Hungary, you can imagine you're going to demand 15% interest, and that's called crowding out, which is a very difficult problem for global financial markets to face and may potentially lead to the sovereign default, the collapse of some countries, and they're unable to pay their debt. So there's a wide range of potential implications of this. All right, now, the political landscape in the United States has changed dramatically, some would say. Um, and we're seeing, as a, as a consumer-driven economy, I don't know if that's what's going to evolve from the political change that we're seeing. I'm almost sensing, and I brought this up yesterday, Joshua, that we may go from a consumer-driven economy to a political economy. For instance, you've got GE, uh, a polling position with, with uh, the administration, etc. Do you see anything like that going on? Is it going to be a political environment versus a consumer-driven environment? 
Yeah, I think, you know, as things get more desperate as people are confirming, mean, again, with the age of the unthinkable GE needing to go get support or GM needing sure. support from the government, stuff that a year ago would have been unthinkable. Right. I think corporations are desperate to stay alive. They are incapable to some degree of the kind of reform that's necessary, and they're going to look for any lifeline they can get. And I think, first of all, they're going to turn to the government, but secondly, I think too much of that is really the death knell for the economy. That's going to backfire. Right. I mean, good example today in the Wall Street Journal front page, USI Bank's pay overhaul. Uh, the Obama administration is looking at uh, uh, changing compensation practices across financial service industry. And this and this is a key point here, uh, Joshua, is that including at companies that did not receive federal bailout money. What? I don't get yeah, it. Yeah. Well, it's very hard to know. I mean, the main issue in that space, though, has got to be that you've got, we, we keep having these exploding moral hazard traps in markets where, you know, people who are taking the risks are not being held accountable for the risk. I, I think it's very hard to claw back stuff that's already been done. But going forward, I don't think it's unreasonable to say, you know what, if you, if you crash the car and total everything, you're, you got to pay up if you haven't paid for the insurance in advance. Sure. All right. Let's look forward. What, what, is there's got to be some hopeful prospects. Do you see them in the future? Absolutely. It's that the age of the unthinkable is also filled with all kinds of innovation. You know, one of the people I spent time with was one of the people who worked a lot on the subject of trying to use technology to make the world better through the Internet. And no question that the more innovation you have in the world, the better off things are likely to be. So ultimately, you look at the core record of the last 10 years, we've had a lot of disruption, but it's mostly been disruption for good. Okay. All right. Where can we get a copy of The Age of the Unthinkable? Pretty much anywhere. Amazon, your local bookstore, wherever it's convenient. Nice. All right. So head out today, folks. Uh, it's right there on your screen, the uh, Amazon.com, Age, Age of Unthinkable is the name of the uh, book. Of course, Joshua Cooper Rama with us today. Hey, uh, Joshua, do you have a website people can go to? Absolutely, uh, JoshuaRamo.com. JoshuaRamo.com. It's absolutely fantastic. Joshua, thanks for spending some time with us today on Traders Nation. Do appreciate it. No problem. Take care. You're more than welcome. All right, there you have it, folks. Get a copy of The Age of the Unthinkable, Why the New World Disorder Consistently Surprises Us in what we can do about it, okay? Very interesting topic, without a doubt. And it is, without a doubt, an ever-changing world. Some good, 